you, my friends. Let's continue, please, uh, the algebra course, lecture 22. It's about quadratic equations. In this video, I will show you four methods to solve quadratic equations. Just to remind you, please, if you want to see any algebra course lecture, just visit the playlist algebra course lectures. Now here we will present method number one by factoring, method number two by square root property, method number three by completing the square, method number four by quadratic formula. After that we will see three related topics, sum and product, solve for a specified variable, and one or two examples about applications of quadratic equations. So what is a quadratic equation? Second degree equation, it's easy. So the form ax squared plus bx plus c, a is a real number, b is a real number, c is a real number, equals zero. So we have here four examples to see. Now, one property we will use before we start we call it zero factor property. It's very simple. If the product of two numbers is equal to zero, then at least one should be zero. So the, the rule says here, if a times b is equal to zero implies a equals zero or b equals zero. Simple example down here, because when we factor the quadratic equation, we will have some kind of two brackets like this x minus 2 times the bracket x plus 3. So we say the first one is equal to 0 or the second one is equal to 0. This one x equals 2 and the second one x equals minus 3. So we get this from zero factor property. Now again okay, just presenting here the four methods, the, the name of the method and then we will go now in details starting with the first one by factoring. In the factoring we start with example one directly. Solve the quadratic equation by factoring x minus one all squared plus six x is equal to minus two. Very clearly we see that the equation is not arranged. To factor, just I'll go back one second here, put in the factoring, put the equation equal zero, must. Put the equation equal to zero, then you factor. So for sure this one is not arranged and we have here 6x and here we have perfect squared x minus 1 or squared so we have to expand it so the first idea here is to rearrange this is an easy considered easy example rearrange the equation to be equal to zero then factor so this one by the formula we have x squared minus 2x plus 1 6x bring the minus 2 on this side plus 2 uh, add all like terms, that's 4x plus 3, and now we factor. You know, to see factoring, this is quadratic, you can have cubic later, or any other equation by factoring. You can see the videos on factoring. There are three videos on factoring. So x plus 3, x plus 1. Now we use the property for zero factor property. x plus 3 is equal to 0, or x plus 1 is equal to 0, so the solutions are minus 3 and minus 1. Easy, easy. Let's go to method number 2. Square root property, we call it. Method number 2. If we have a squared here, x squared is equal k, then x will be plus or minus the square root of k. We have seen this formula here. Just to remind you, you can see the video on Algebra Course Lecture 17. So this one we called it there in lecture 17, we called it power equation. Now this is quadratic because the squared is the highest power. So by this formula we can make it a general if we have x plus m, any number there, squared is equal to k, then x plus m, same formula, plus or minus, square root of k, take m on the other side, becomes minus m. Now I put here three simple, easy, nice equations, examples. x squared is equal to 9. Use this rule here. x plus or minus 3 solutions, two solutions. x minus 3 squared is equal to 7. Same idea. Now k, see the k here is a positive number. So x minus 3 squared is equal to 7. 
take the square root of both sides, x minus three plus or minus square root of seven, leave it. So three plus or minus square root of seven. If we have a negative number on the right side, which is k here, see it looks, this one here, the, the yellow equation here, two x plus five all squared is equal minus 100. It looks nice, but actually no real solutions. Because when you take the square root of a negative number, it's imaginary complex number, not real. Now let's see example two. Solve this equation by square root property. Well, you can pause the video if you like. Later in this lecture, you will see more nice equations. This is still simple or acceptable. So we have to rearrange it. So you have to use, you have to use this one, k squared, x squared is equal k or x plus m squared is equal k. It's the same equation. So we have to take uh, eight on the other side and then we have to divide by three. Now we rearrange the equation. As I said, take eight on the other side becomes 27 divided by three, nine. Now I take the square root of both sides. So two X because K now is the nine. So two X minus eight plus or minus square root of nine. Square root of nine, we can simplify. So it is three. So eight plus three, 11. 8 minus 3, 5, and there is a 2x there. So we divide by 2. So the solution is 11 over 2, 5 over 2. Sometimes they ask you to say, uh, like in this, in this example, find the sum of the solutions or find the product of the solutions. Now you can add these two solutions or you can multiply them. It depends on the question. But also later in this lecture, I will show you a very fast method to find the sum and the product. Just wait. Now method number three, completing the square. We complete the square. Remember here, we, the aim is to solve the equation. We have to complete the square. Also completing the square we have seen before so I just remind you, you can see please, Algebra course lecture 20, 2-0. We have mentioned the same slide almost, this one here, completing the square, when we had the circle. But I will repeat it again in case you did not see that video, lecture 20. So step one, step two, step three, step four. Completing the square, this is the equation here. You see minus 3x squared plus 18x minus 21. Ugly equation. We can change it to this. Just look down, please, here. See, we can change this one into, look at this nice, x minus 3 squared is equal to 2. So you can change this equation by completing the square. You have to use these steps. Now, the first one, leading coefficient must be 1. So it is a minus three here, the leading coefficient. So we divide the whole equation by minus three. Whatever the number there, if the number here is seven, divide by seven. If it is five minus two, if it is half also, if it is half, you have to make it one. So multiply by two. Now what do we get? X squared minus six X. Just take the constant on the other side because we don't need it now. Later we will use it. See the minus seven, we will use it in step four here. Now take half the coefficient of the X. See, look now, after you divide by the leading coefficient, now we finish from X squared, we move to X. Minus six, you see, this is the coefficient of the X. Whatever the number there, divide by two, take half, that's the rule here. Because we will reach complete or perfect. So divide by two, you get minus three. Now you square. Now let me tell you here, suppose this minus uh, six is minus five or five even. Divide by two becomes fraction, leave it. When you square it here in step three, you get fraction, also leave it. Now it's easy, minus three squared is nine. Now I add nine, see this nice color here? I add nine on the right side, nine on the left side. See, on the left side here, it's all perfect. We have seen this many times, x squared minus 6x plus 9. So this is x minus 3. How do you do it? 
the middle sign will be the middle sign here. If this is a minus, it becomes a minus. If this is a plus, it becomes a plus. This sign always plus. Take the square root of x squared, take the square root of nine, you write it here. Now we come to minus seven, remember minus seven, plus nine, that's two. Now this, you can use method two now. Remember method two, just a few minutes ago? X minus three plus or minus square root of two. This is the solution here. Three plus square root of two, three minus square root of two is the solution of this nice, easy equation in step one. That's completing the square. Very important topic in algebra. You will see it many times in many math courses. Let's apply completing the square on this nice example. You can take a minute. I think it's a good idea here. You can try it. 2x squared minus 3x minus 1. You know the first step. I can help you. The first step, the leading coefficient. You want to go back? You can go back and make sure you understand these four steps. So the leading coefficient should be 1. It is 2 here. Divide by 2. Easy. Now remember here, 1 over 2 will be fraction. Leave it. Now, I just mentioned here that A, you know, the quadratic equation has A, B, C, A is 2, B minus 3, C is minus 1. You will not use this one here, but you will use it in method number 4. Just, just to remind you that there are three coefficients always when they are on, on one side. So LC must be 1 divided by 2. So now we have x squared minus 3 over 2 is equal half. Look at this nice equation here. Remember, all fractions, it looks all fractions. That's, that's why I, I wrote all the details here. Minus 3 over 2, we need to take half of it. You know, like divide by 2. Okay, if you want to divide by 2, you, the same way you can say multiply by half. See, I put it here in a small yellow box. Minus 3 over 2 times half, that's divide by 2. So minus 3 over 4, square it. 9 over 16. So I have to add on this side 9 over 16, on the other side 9 over 16. You see this question, example 3, has more fractions. The other example are simple because it has only integers, but the same idea. Now let's continue. You can pause also the video here if you like and continue to see the solution. See, on the left side here, we have a minus, so it will be minus in the bracket. There is an x here, 9 over 16, take the square root, it will be 3 over 4. You see, this is the formula here, I remind you, a squared minus 2ab plus b squared is a minus b squared. So this one on the left, on the left, use perfect square trinomial. So x minus 3 over 4. Here we add, multiply by 8, multiply by 8, because we need LCD. Remember? So 17 over 16. Now we take the square root method number two. You have to use method number two in method number three. So x minus three over four plus or minus square root of 17 over 16. You can simplify this one here by the radicals. Square root of 16 is four. Rearrange everything. This is the solution. SS means we have seen before solution set. 3 plus square root of 17 over 4, 3 minus square root of 17 over 4. This is the solution of the equation. Now we come to method number 4. Method number 4, I think it's very important, very fast, but you have to be careful here. Let me explain the things that you need. This is the equation ax squared bxc is equal to 0. Remember, Always you have to identify small a, small b, small c. Every quadratic equation, every quadratic equation has a, b, and c. Some of these may be zero, but a cannot be zero. So b sometimes be zero, c sometimes be zero. So we use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula, you have to remember, we have seen it in school so many times. x equals directly minus b. You see this B here, you put the minus, minus B, plus or minus, square root of capital D. 
divided by 2a. Now, what is capital D? B squared minus 4ac. Now, this, this number here, under the radical, the number under the radical, we call it radican. In this case, we call it discriminant. So you have to use capital D. Some books, they say delta or discriminant. It's a number, guys, remember. Discriminant, <clears throat> be careful here. Discriminant does not include the radical, only the number under. So it's a real number, it can be positive. You see here we have three cases. D can be greater than zero, equal zero, less than zero, because it's a real number. So what does it mean when it is positive? Two real solutions. If this is greater than zero, two real solutions. If D is equal to zero, See, put here zero, we will see now an example. If you put D zero, you get minus B over 2A. So one repeated or double real solution. If it is negative number, too complex or non-real solution. So easy to understand these. Let's see an example. Solve the quadratic equation by the quadratic formula. I put two nice, actually, I don't know why nice. The first one is nice, you will see why. You will, you will figure out why it's nice. Second one, because we have fractions. See, instead of putting A, B, C, you can remove the fraction. I told you many times before how to remove the fraction. Let's go to the first one. You wanna try? X plus three squared plus 20 is equal four bracket one minus X. Solve by quadratic formula. You know what to do? I think you should know what to do. Let's see what to do. Rearrange. This one you have to rearrange in A. This one you have to rearrange also. Did you find the solution, please? So nice. Number one, you will see why. Now look at the surprise. The equation you rearrange it. Arrange it. X plus 3 squared. So it's x squared, 6x plus 9 plus 24 minus 4x. You multiply on the right side. Just I remind you here in the yellow with the quadratic formula, QF, quadratic formula, that's quadratic formula here. Now we still, oh boy, now take all the uh, like terms, 4, that's 10, uh, 29 minus 4. Now look here, x squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 0. Anytime you use quadratic formula, I advise you, anytime completely, even if you are busy, to use quadratic formula, find A, find B, find C, before you start. Otherwise, maybe you will do a mistake. So A is one, yes, it is one. B is 10, yes, it is 10. C is 25, now easy, let's find the discriminant. Capital D only, without radical. B squared minus four AC. It happened that capital D is zero. That's why this question is nice. See, if you use the formula, see this yellow QF quadratic formula, use it down, minus 10, which is minus B, plus or minus square root of zero, which is zero. So minus 10 over two is minus five. One solution, but it is repeated or doubled. So when do we have repeated or doubled? If D is zero, capital D. Now, you wanna try the second one, please. <clears throat> I give you an advice when we did equations with fractions before. Any equation whatsoever. If you have a fraction, you can remove the fraction, find the LCD. So we have two, five, and 10. So the LCD will be 10. So just multiply by 10 this one, multiply by 10, multiply by 10. If you multiply by 10 here, 10 times half, so it becomes 5x squared. Multiply by 10, 10 over 5, 2, so that's 4x on the other side, and here plus 3. See, now it's easy. This equation, same equation. By magic, multiply both sides by the LCD. Rearrange it now. 5x squared minus 4x minus 3. Now find A, B, C. Any time, any question, you just think of or see the word quadratic formula, write A, write B, write C. Now, 
capital D, D squared minus 4AC, uh, minus 4 squared, minus 4 from the formula, 5 is A, C is minus 3, you get 76. It's not always zero, see like the other question. Now use the quadratic formula, this is the same quadratic formula we know, minus B, so B is minus 4 here, minus B becomes 4, plus or minus square root of 76, divided by 2 times A, that's here, 2 times 5, 10. Now continue on the next slide to see the final solution. You want to try it? So easy now, more than half. Now, from the last slide, we have 76. 76 is four times 19. Four, I can take two outside. See, I can take two outside. Here, there is a two square root of 19. Then I take two common factor here. So that two times five, I can cancel the two. Just be careful about these numbers in algebra. 2 plus or minus square root of 19 over 5. So these are the solutions. Very nice solutions. Now, sometimes, look at this right box here. Sometimes they ask you about the sum of the solutions or the product of the solution. So some students, they will solve it like this. This is solution 1 and this is solution 2. So they go and add and then they go and multiply. It's correct but it's time consuming. After a few minutes, maybe a few minutes, two, three minutes, it depends. I will show you a very quick method how to find the sum and the product. Maybe less time. Yeah, let's see now an example five. I did not write nice, but it's so good. Let's see, solve the equation for T. Uh, we have R, we have T squared, we have S, we have T, we have k, we have 3, we have 1. r is not 0, that's a condition given. So let's solve the equation for t. So t equals what? Well, from the first moment, it's not easy because we have t squared and t. So it looks like this is a quadratic. Quadratic. You cannot take t common factor here. If you think of that way, that will be wrong because you still have a t in the bracket. So this is not easy question. Now let's solve for t. Rearrange the quadratic. You see the quadratic equation. Then find a, b, c. Then use quadratic formula. Now rearrange it. rt squared minus 3st. k bring it on the other side minus 1 equals 0. Solve for t. That means we need t. Now look at this equation which is not easy. This is a, r. a is r which is the coefficient of t squared. B all this, the coefficient of the t minus 3s. C everything after t, so k minus 1. If this is difficult for you, just try to imagine here. I put here a simple example so that you can compare. If you have 2t squared here, if you have 2t squared minus 7t plus 33 is equal to 0. Easily you can see A is 2, B is minus 7, C is 33. That's the same idea. These are numbers, these are variables, R, S, K, and T. So T squared is the variable in the equation, like X squared and X. But here we have T squared and T. Now let's find capital D, which is the discriminant. B squared, you square all this, you see? b squared minus 4a, put a r here, and times the c. Continue on the next slide to see. If you can find the capital D discriminant correctly, that's very okay. Now, we have seen a is r, b is minus 3, as c is k minus 1. I will continue here to find discriminant. So b squared is 9 s squared minus 4 r k minus 1. You distribute here minus 4 r times that one. And now the t. See, we said solve for t. This is t instead of the x in the quadratic formula. 
So T will be this one. See, we have uh, B is minus 3S, so minus B becomes 3S. This one under the radical, unfortunately, we cannot simplify. So this is all equal to T. I know, not easy. Now, this one is a reading material. You can read at your leisure time because I will give you in this slide two very important formulas in very nice colors. The sum minus B over A, the product C over A. What are these? Remember these formulas you can use only, only if you have quadratic equation. AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero. Only, you cannot use it in any other equation. So the sum, that means if you add X1, X2, the solutions. The product, if you multiply the solutions. Here I put for you nice gift from where <clears throat> I get the formula minus B over A. See, I, I, I solved the equation. This is the equation. I solved it by quadratic formula. And then I found the sum by adding. Takes time here, but you will find minus B over A. The product, if you multiply them, it will take time to multiply. Be careful, you can do it. Be careful about signs, you will get C over A, believe it or not. So these are the nice formulas I used before. You can find directly without solving, you can find the sum, you can find the product without solving. Now let's take an important example here. We have uh, equation, you see the equation here, x squared bx plus c. We don't know b, we don't know c. We have to find them actually, and then find the product bc. But I gave you the uh, solutions, three plus square root of five, three minus square root of five. Maybe the idea is not clear. You can think, what can you do? It's better here to think. I gave you the solution. Let me give you a hint here. So this is uh, X1, all this, you see X1, like first solution. And this one, second solution. So why not we go back here, first solution, second, find the sum, you add them, find the product, you multiply them, and then you can find B and C. So this is a hint also, same hint I was talking about, three plus square root of five, three minus, this is given, these are the solution. So why not we use the sum? See, what is A in our question? X squared plus BX plus, see A here is one. So that's one here, so that's one, A is one. So I can add them, you see now, clearly. Find the sum, so you add the solutions, the given. They are three square root of five, you add them, plus three minus square root of five, that's six is equal minus B over A, so B minus six now, easily. Multiply them, you know how to multiply by the formula, A squared minus B squared, so that's nine minus five is four. C over one, A is one, so C is four. When you multiply B and C, minus 24 is the answer. Now sometimes we have a little applications on quadratic equations. Application means we will give you a word problem and then you have to read the problem carefully, assign a variable, x or y or t or w, it depends on, on the question, write the equation, solve it, and make sure the answer is reasonable and correct. I will show you two examples actually here. A rectangular building lot is 15 meter longer than it is wide and has the area of 700 feet squared. Find the dimensions of the lot, find the parameter of the lot. I give you the area, I give you a condition that the length is 15 feet longer than the width. So what can you do here? Try, if the question is not clear in these questions, make a sketch. Make a sketch, at least you can visualize, like we have a rectangle, so this is length, this is width, the dimension means uh, find W, find L. The area, we know what is the area. I think you know 
uh, parameter, there's a formula for the parameter. The parameter is the sum of all sides. So 2w plus 2l, the area is l times w, this is the area. See like that, this is a sketch. You want to try? Okay. So we need to find the dimensions, we need to find w, we need to find l, we need to find the parameter. Okay, the whole idea is let w be the width. Okay, so let w be the width. Now the length will be length l, okay? 15 plus w. And if you multiply the width times the length, that's the area. See, that's a different formula here. This is the formula here. Multiply the width times the length will be the area. All right. So now the width plus 15 here, we can say for the length, you see that one. So W times L is equal 700. Rearrange the equation, W squared plus 15W minus 700 is equal to zero. Now the factoring is not that easy, or sometimes it's easy, but I will show you how do you factor 700 here. You can say seven times 100, and then the 100 is 25 times four. So you have to find two numbers. When you add them, <clears throat> you get 15. So I can take one five here, 35, one five there, 20. See, the difference will be 15. So W minus 20, W plus 35. Now W is 20, a W minus 35 is rejected because it's a minus. So now the dimensions are W is already 20 feet. Length, as we said before, W plus 15 or 15 plus W, which is 35. The parameter 2L plus 2W, multiply the numbers, you get 110 feet. Now let's see another nice easy example. Find three consecutive integers whose sum is 156. Now I think everything is clear except the word consecutive. Consecutive means the numbers following each other, they are after each other like 5, 6, 7, 20, 21, 22, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, but there are three of them. So what do you, how do you start? Always, because in these questions, there is no X, there is no Y, there is no W, you have to identify the variable, let X. See, we say start like this, always let X or let Y if you like Y. Let X be the first number, easy is X. If I know X, then X plus one is the second number. X plus two is the third number because X I mentioned, assume that X will be the first number. So the sum is 156. So I add all the three numbers, X, X plus one, X plus two is equal 156. So you can just add like terms, three X plus three, take three on the other side, divide by three, easily you can get 51. So now if X is 51, the other number 52, and then the third number is 53. Now I put this as a gift here to know consecutive integers. The first one here, we have three ideas here, consecutive numbers, even consecutive numbers and odd. See in the first one we have like, 50, 51, 52. Even, see the second one here in the even, maybe we can have 40, 42, 44, 46. And in the odd, we can have 17, 19, 21. Now, these are all the exams questions. I have presented here eight questions. This is the first one. This is our questions, general ones for you to practice and try to understand the concepts more properly. So we have question one here. P is the positive solution, N is the negative solution. Try to read, please, and then you try each one. There is question number two. The equation is given, change the form. Uh, question number three says, very nice question. We have X minus two B equals A minus B squared over X, solve for X. 
And now we have here uh, an equation that we have to find the K and the discriminant also. Question number five is very nice. Also, you have to find K. Uh, this one, given the two solutions, find K plus M. It's a good question, number six. You can read it and try it, please. Number seven, this is an application on the consecutive even integers, positive consecutive even integers. Uh, number eight, solve by any method you like. You have two equations. Now, after you try these, you can find the answers here. Answers of all the exam questions, eight of them. If you feel that you understand these, it's okay. If not, please go on the video, all the exam questions, quadratic equation. You will find the complete detailed solution of all these eight questions. Some of them have, they, they have two parts. Okay. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. And I wish I can see you in another time with another topic. Just to remind you that this is lecture 22 of the algebra course lectures. Thank you very much.